Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to you all, and thank you for taking the time to join this webinar, FinTech Meets InsureTech, an unprecedented alliance in SME services. My name is Matthew Toombs, and I'm a sales consultant at Crift Decision Solutions, and I'll be hosting the webinar today. You'll find out more about CDS and Strands in a moment, but first, let me introduce you to my colleagues joining me today, Bilal Assad and Richard Wilson. Bilal is the Senior Relationship Manager at Crift Decision Solutions. Bill? Morning. And we've also got Richard, who's the pre-sales consultant at Strands, a fintech company that joined the Crift Group last year. Morning, Richard. Good morning. So today, Richard and Bilal will give you a sneak peek of how banks and insurance companies together can leverage data to offer both a better assessment and also empower their SME customers by providing an added value joint propositions. If you do have any questions throughout, you should see an attendee called webinar host on the right side of your screen. So if you can use the chat box and put any questions to webinar host and we'll have a Q&A section where we can pick these up later on. And finally, at the end of this session, we'll give you a few details about an exclusive ebook that we're delighted to share with you for free after the webinar. But for now, I'll pass over to Richard and Bilal. Thanks, Matt. Firstly, let me thank you all again for attending today's webinar. As Matt already mentioned, my name is Bilal Assad, and I'm the Senior Relationship Manager here at CRIF. Now, in today's webinar, I aim to give you as much exposure about the importance of innovation in your business and the reality of how fintech and insurtech meet. But before we do this, I'd like to myself to give you a brief introduction about CRIF and Strands. CRIF is a global company. We specialize in providing credit bureau and business information, along with risk management and credit solutions. Our headquarters in Italy, where we were established in 1988, have grown to be more than 5,700 employees, operate in four continents, and we're serving, seven, serving hundreds of thousands of customers. In continental Europe, we are a leading provider of banking credit information, and globally, we are one of the key players providing solutions for businesses and commercial information. For eight consecutive years, we've been included in the prestigious FinTech 100, a ranking of the global leading global technology solution providers to the financial services industry. And CRIF have been operating in the UK for almost 25 years. We provide added value solutions such as information services, customer profiling, digital solutions to support decision management, fraud prevention, and digital transformation. I hope to give you some background about CRIF. And let me have Richard to give you more information about Strands. Thanks, Bill. So Strands was founded in 2004 and joined the CRIF family in April 2020. Specialized in big data, AI, and machine learning and creating highly customized financial management solutions for our customers worldwide in both the retail and SME segments. So we enable banks to anticipate their customer needs and provide them with the next best action through personalized insights, improving engagements and customer interactions. So while empowering people to better manage their lives and businesses and to make better financial decisions in a smarter way through a number of techniques and features such as cash flow predictions, financial calendars, dashboards, insights, and so on. So Strands customers include tier one banks around the globe, but also smaller financial institutions that, that are focused on customer experience and engagement. Thanks, Richard. So both Criff and Strands have a real focus on digital transformation. And as a result of this, we are an end-to-end -end solution provider to diverse institutions. We cover all aspects of the client journey, ranging from customer onboarding to business development, and pretty much everything in between. But the focus today is engagement. This is a parameter in which both Digital Booster and the BFM Engager solutions sit. But to give some more context, Digital Booster falls within the InsureTech side and BFM Engager will fall on the FinTech side. Now let me have back to Richard to take you for our first poll. Great, thanks. So today we'll be holding two polls, um, and with the first poll being um, on the subject of personalization. So what we want to do is just get your, your opinion on personalization um, and, you know, what percentage of customers would consider switching banks due to lack of personalization. So we'll give you about 30 seconds to, to cast your votes. And if you could just do that, it would be much appreciated. Great. So it, 
And so a number of you voted and, and thanks for your votes. And as we can see, you know, 40% of customers, you know, which is very, I think quite a high percentage when you consider uh, where personalization has come from. So a few years ago, you know, people weren't interested in, in sharing the information, um, but you know, that that's all changing. And we can see that, you know, personalization is something that is, is driving, um, you know, a lot of activity and, you know, people that are less wary uh, for personalization. So previously customers, you know, really didn't, don't want that, that, um, you know, that mass mail approach where you're, you're, you're saturating markets or, you know, sending emails and, and that are just to the general public. So personalization, as we can see, has become quite an essential part where almost half of customers would actually leave the bank to get that personalization, um, which leads us into our next slide, which is the strands engager. So the strands engager product is our insight engine, which is doing just that for people. We're transforming data into relevant and timely insights. So we categorize and enrich this data and run these through our models that we have developed, detecting recurring patterns, understanding behavior changes, and predicting likely outcomes. Providing people with insights that are relevant to them at the right moment and actions that are meaningful and appropriate to that insight. So our insights are driven by customer behavior and spending patterns. And although we also target specific audiences, providing customers with personalization takes customer engagement to the next level, improving customer perception and increasing the satisfaction of our customers. Amazing. So Rich has gone through obviously the Engager solution and that is the FinTech side of today's webinar. Now let me take you for Digital Booster and what it is and that focuses more on the InsureTech side. So first question, what is Digital, digital Booster? Digital Booster is an insurance enabling platform which is there to support both banks and insurance companies to either improve the existing insurance distribution, offering or support the implementation of a new one. Customers' needs are changing and evolving every day and existing methods of distribution being offered by banks and insurance companies are not effective. And this is one of the reasons why Digital Booster came into existence. Digital Booster is there to provide a white label solution, allowing both banks and insurance companies to accelerate the implementation of a fully digital insurance proposition. For example, if a, um, a, a customer, uh, what, uh, banks with a bank, is looking to purchase an insurance product, when they're purchasing through their web-based application or firm-based application, they'll remain in the, the bank's world. So the look and feel would remain off the bank. Um, this can vary and change on a case-by-case -case basis. Some banks would have partnerships with insurance companies. So they would want the customers to travel from their bank to the insurance company's portal. And we can allow this to occur through single sign-on as with other things as well. So essentially customer security is paramount in this. And this is why um, we aim to offer a white, well, we do offer a white label solution to our customers. The focus for Digital Booster is to support innovative insurance products such as on-demand insurance, micro-insurance and parametric insurance. Why? With the support of some consultancies such as Bain, PwC and Deloitte, we will share two interesting statistics with yourself. Firstly, 85% of millennials believe that insurance policies do not cover their true needs, which is quite interesting. And the second one is 82% of customers would actually change the insurer if the right and this is where Digital Booster really comes into play and really penetrates the market by providing customers with the right insurance product at the right time based upon their own behavior. The platform itself has an easy API integration for both products and the platform. The customer is able to provide a first notification of loss within the app or web-based application. The platform is able to do customer profiling and this utilizes the built-in machine learning and AI capabilities. And with an easy API integration, you're able to practically create new and iterative products in a very short amount of time. Now, you can see on the screen, the right hand side, the numbers, um, we already have 25 plus insurance templates readily available. And as a result of this, we're able to deliver an end-to-end -end solution within approximately four months, but this can vary depending on complexity. And the best part is Digital Booster is not a idea, um, it's live, and working in 20 plus banks and insurance companies, which I feel is really, really important to mention. So we've now obviously gone through Engager on the FinTech side and Digital Boost on the InsureTech side, but what we're going to discuss now is you know, how does FinTech and InsureTech actually meet? Um, so with the collaboration of the Strands BFM Engager solution, coupled with Chris Digital Booster platform, it has allowed us to have the edge on what was needed to ensure FinTech and InsureTech meet. 
leveraging the banking data provided by the BF Engages solution and using the advanced capability to boost the platform, we're now able to significantly impact the customer journey in a positive light, which in turn allows both the bank and insurance company to truly innovate their business. The best way to illustrate this is by a jigsaw on the left hand side of the screen. It's there to highlight that with all four components pieced together, the collaboration of FinTech and InsureTech is possible. The Engage and Digital Platform Integrated allows a unique solution which can allow both the bank and insurance company to quickly expand their core product portfolios. As we discussed, innovation is key in Digital Booster and Strands. So our focus is to promote this as much as we possibly can. And this is the reason why Digital Booster came into existence. Now with this integration, you're really able to boost cross-selling and revenues essentially from one single application, which is fantastic. So the data provided by Engager platform allows us to uncover hidden customer needs that maybe both the customer and the bank or insurance company would know about. By understanding customer or consumer behavior and promoting both a reactive and proactive approach, the insight then allows the user to have the right insurance product promoted to them at the right time. Now I'm sure you can all agree, we could have the best platform out there with all the data out there that you need. Um, but unless the journey of the client is smooth, easy, um, and adaptable, then the penetration levels won't be impacted. And this is essentially where digital business really plays its part. We aim to provide or we provide a totally end-to-end -end digital solution that allows the client to purchase an insurance policy within a few clicks and get covered instantly. We'll show you how this journey works and the use cases coming up later on in the webinar. But for now, let me hand back to Richard who will take you through the ecosystem in which Digital Booster and Engager sit within Right, thanks, Bill. So how does this really look? Um, so we're using our engagement solution and providing this white label financial management solutions and insights to into the financial institute's digital channels. And these can be push or in-app. Um, this is done by using customized widgets and APIs that allow our customers to present this information, you know, using their own user experience, their tone of voice, and their own look and feel. So insights are triggered when the customer activity matches the logic, understanding the customer needs and providing them with the actions that are relevant to them. With the ability to provide them with different actions, and these can include educational content, you know, actions such as transferring money and applying for products that meet their needs. And that's where Engager and Digital Booster come together. Yeah, no, exactly. I think um, as per the flow you can see here on the ecosystem, you realize that at this point, Digital Booster comes into play. But actually, in fact, Digital Booster had already come into play when the first trigger was activated by the customer. In this ecosystem, the Digital Booster platform has all the insurtech enabling services available. These services have the capabilities to interact directly with the insurance company. And this is where it really comes to life. This interaction access to real-time quotes, products, claims, first notification of loss, and so on. The actual insurance product will be co-designed with the bank. This is why on the top of this slide, you can see the arrow going essentially from right to left. The client journey itself naturally flows from left to right. But what we're trying to highlight here is that when the customer journey starts and the data insights are collected and the triggers come into play, we're able to intercept and understand the customer's needs and requirements. Because I'm sure you can all agree, we don't wake up in the morning thinking about what insurance policy we need to take out. So this is where digital business really comes in and make plays its part. It allows us to utilize our insurance enabling platform that is designed to push the right insurance product to the customer at the right time. As mentioned, because Criff and Strands have the technology to intercept the customer's needs, this is what allows us to build such an ecosystem and work based on the customer's needs and requirements, as opposed to just passing things through for the sake of passing them through. And this is fundamentally where FinTech and InsureTech meet. Now let me have back to Richard to take you through our next poll. Thanks, Phil. So our second poll is, is focused on SMEs and, and their perception of how they've been treated by their banks. So again, if you can just you know spend 20 seconds just to give us your vote, that would be much appreciated. Great, thank you. So 
So this one surprised me. Um, I know that the, the SME market segment has been underserved previously, but I really thought things were improving. Um, and over 90% of SMEs feel that they're untre unfairly treated by their banks, which just shows, you know, although this is a focus on the market, we still have a long way to go with the services and, and things that we're providing to our to the SME market. Um, so if we look at, and that is why today's focus on, on the, um, the use cases will be we'll focused on, on SME and, and some of the use cases that we'll go through um, today. So we've we've heard how Engage, what Engage is doing and, and Digital Booster, but we just wanted to give you some simple use cases just to walk you through that process to understand you know, exactly how this is coming together in a real life example. So Sally is an art dealer who is, has a business account and travels a lot. So what we're doing here is you know, understanding her needs and when she does travel again, or or has some travel rated spend and that could be hotels it could be the flat um you know it could be actually a merchant such as eurostar so once we identify these transactions and and um and her sort of upcoming travel we will then trigger this insight and present her with something that's relevant to her at that moment and um, when she is in the market or when it is front of mind you know that she is traveling soon so this insight will be presented to her with the information and a couple of actions that she can action that are relevant to that to that information and, and the time that she's actually making these these transactions and purchasing um, and this is where a recommendation to that insurance such as travel insurance that is relevant will start and where the digital booster process will begin so yes yeah, so as Richard mentioned once we get the insights that triggers the notification to the client and prompt them to explore the option of taking out some travel insurance so in the case of Sally, she's gone off and she's looking to go to Ireland so for six days, I think it is, um, and she's traveling alone. So the quote comes up instantly in real time. Um, and then once Sally's confirmed the price, she can go over to her information. Now through single sign-on, um, all the information is pre for her. So there's no need for her to add in additional information or type it all in, which saves the customer a lot of time. So once obviously the details are all confirmed, you can then hop onto the next slide. Once Sally has confirmed the details and she's gone through the terms and conditions, the IDD and so on, confirm the price, confirm what she's going to be getting, she can buy the policy and that cover is instantly put in place for Sally. And within a few minutes after that has gone through, she'll receive an email with all the documentation that she requires for the travel. So the journey really is digital. Um, and it is, it's a very quick process of the client to be covered instantly as well. So let's assume, obviously, in the scenario that Sally hasn't actioned the first trigger, um, what would happen? Now, due to the advanced capabilities of our solution, we're able to utilize or leverage the geolocations. So if Sally for example, missed the first trigger and now she's arrived at the airport and the scenario she's at Heathrow, she will get a second prompt. If she's there for more than 10 or 15 minutes, the um, solution will naturally feel that she's taking a flight somewhere. So they'll prompt her once again to, you know, Remind her, has she got travel insurance? Have you got travel insurance? Yes or no? And if they don't, while she's checking her luggage or while she's in the queue waiting for a flight, she can pretty much get herself insured almost instantly um, with the cover. So if you can see the journey itself, it follows through the exact same process. Um, it'll be the same location, duration, amount, confirmation of details, and the policy is activated. Um, and this really gives the client peace of mind that, you know, they have been prompted at the right time to take up the right insurance for their travel requirements in this scenario. Thanks, Bill. So the first insight was really focused around the, the end user. And what we've done at Strange is also develop um, a, a business tool called our, our back office tool, which is providing customers with you know, a dashboard and a sort of system overview of how it's performing. So how many insights have been triggered, um, how many of those have been viewed, what actions have been, been taken, and that feedback that's actually happening on those insights. So we can see here, you know, we've got a, some metrics that are presented, um, as well as what insights are getting the best feedback and maybe some that aren't performing as well as expected. So this tool will give the business users the ability to understand what's happening um, on a system level or on an insight level. Um, and they can also have a look at these insights that maybe aren't performing as expected and, and maybe adjust the content or, or, or change an action to, to improve the, you know, those performances and just really, you know, get the system to, to run as expected. So for this next use case, what we're going to do is walk you through, you know, that business user at the bank 
that would actually be creating this insight for a new example. So we have the, the employee at the bank that would you know, click on the, on the right there to, to create an insight. You know, what we can see here is, is the insights that we have in, in the system that are, are live. We can create that insight and start populating some of the fields. So the previous example was Sally around travel insurance. You know, during the pandemic, you know, people might not be traveling as much, but, but things like cyber insurance are really starting to get some focus um, and need a lot of attention. Where customers are actually needing an extra bit of protection um, and maybe are not covering themselves as well as they should. So for this example, you know, we've got the title that you can put in, you know, what you want to call this insight. Um, the description would allow you to put in a high level description so that the next you know, employee or, or person can actually understand what, what this insight's doing at a high level. We have the ability to add tags. So for instance, for this one, we could add insurance um, as a tag so that when you want to search for the, the insurance sub insights, we can actually then, you know, group those together and see what, what's live and what we have. Um, on the system at, at that moment. Um, I did actually miss the top, there is an active um, toggle. So this is where we can activate and deactivate these insights dependent on, on what you want to do. We have a lot of other, you know, sort of priority tabs where we can prioritize the messages above others um, because what we're doing is, is sort of giving these, these insights priority so that we're not saturating that more, um, those channels and these might be sent before something else that, you know, might maybe have less importance. And again, so this is just a basic example. So what we're looking at now is creating that trigger and the event. So this one, we're looking at a category um, and it's actually a subcategory. So under utilities, we'll, we'll then select service provider and look for some keywords around, you know, maybe who some of those providers are in the transactions themselves. So we could you know, look for Wix or GoDaddy or, Squ or Squarespace. So once we've, you know, decided on the triggers and what we want to do to trigger this insight, we can start, you know, compiling that message and, and getting that content together. So we'll create that content to, to convey that message. And, you know, these, these messages can include variables so that you can personalize them and make them, you know, the tone as you would like, and, you know, get the message across to your customers. Um, on the back of that, we have some actions that we can create. And these actions, again, you know, we could add, you know, single or multiple actions. And, you know, we could create one where there's some um, education or some learn more where we can provide additional information about, you know, what we're trying to send to that customer. Or in this case, you know, provide them with the correct insurance and an action that they can, they can do that's going to actually help them and provide them with that next steps and, and get them covered on this journey. We also at the bottom do have an audience section where we can select, you know, different audiences. And this could be the full population or certain, certain segments that we want to target. So once we've created all that and that that um that spend or that activity you know matches that those that trigger the end user again would get this notification that would be presented with the insight with those you know options that we have provided through the actions um we can also have a feedback mechanism at the at the bottom to see if you know customers are interacting with these and understand that from the metrics in the inner dashboard but once they click buy insurance again that will follow the same journey as we saw with sally where that single sign-on will kick in would have those um, or that that populated um, screens and that insurance will be purchased, you know, almost instantaneously. That's pretty Richard. Thanks for that. So as you guys can see now that, you know, the collaboration of the Engage at All and Digital Booth are coming together really does work and it creates a very interesting customer journey. Now, in the days leading up to the webinar, um, Richard and I had a few meetings to, you know, discuss, you know, what additional use cases should we discuss. Um, and let's just say we had quite a few um, come up. So if we were to go through all of them, we'd go way beyond the allotted time for today's webinar. But what we can do is uh, take you through some additional use cases that we feel would, would really, really work. Now, today's focus has been mostly on SMEs, um, but Digital Booster and the Engager Solution does go beyond that. Now, another use case that I find very interesting is pet insurance, because there are several triggers that can prompt and alert the customer into giving them a potential solution for pet insurance. Now this is leveraged by what we call geolocation. So as you saw in the use case one, where Sally was at the airport, at Heathrow Airport um, boarding her flight, um, it's the same way. So we can base the fact that Sally may have a pet and she has gone into a pet shop or into a vet. And we can essentially leverage that location to say, right, you know, Sally's gone in, let's assume that she has a pet and let's prompt her to say, you know, have you recently reviewed your pet insurance? 
The point we're trying to make is that the integration of this solution is so versatile, it can quite easily, or we can quite easily explore other markets. Yeah, yeah I agree, Bill. And I think also with the, the VET example, we can also understand if a customer's maybe transacted at that VET, um, and that would be a good time, you know, after having a, maybe a, a sort of high spend on your pet that, you know, maybe insurance cover for pet insurance would have saved them some money. So that's another time when we could approach them, you know, through a transaction, um, at a vet or, or, or the like that we could then, you know, be more, more relevant at that time. And there's other examples in retail that, and, and business that almost cross over. We were looking at the travel example for, for Sally that could be on business or personal. Um, and, and similarly with, you know, phone insurance and, and other insurances like that, really. Yeah, so just jump up to that, Richard, as well. So with phone insurance, it's a great solution because obviously a lot of SMEs naturally have phones, so do individuals. Um, but we can take it one step further and also look at doing gadget insurance as well. So to protect your tablets and iPads and laptops and so on. So this is just an exa another example of how the two cross over from the SMEs and corporate world into retail as well. Yeah, I think also to note, you know, that we're talking not only about insurance insights here, but the engagement product and why it's so effective is it's not just providing, you know, single type of, of insights. We're also looking at providing, you know, from our library, different insights on custom behavior. So, and again, a lot of them are proactive around a low balance and providing an option to increase your overdraft or transfer money from a different account, um, understanding large deposits that are coming in and maybe offering a savings product. Um, but there's other things like recurring payments that should have come in that haven't landed and providing, you know, customers with this information and helping them along their way to be financially sound and build that trust so that when, you know, one of these more sort of um, insurance type insights or, or slightly upselling insights come in, customers do, and they are relevant at that time and people are taking the time to look at it and actually understand that this is a need that they that, that can address. So. I think it's quite a powerful thing looking at that relevant timing and making sure that we, we're addressing customer needs when we do. And another use case that we've also um, you know, looked at and, and are doing is integrating third party data. So, you know, with partnership with, with CRIF, we, we're including open banking data, but also we've been integrating into accounting vendors for invoicing data. So I think, again, you know, we're looking at providing insights around invoices that are due or overdue and understanding, you know, what's outstanding. And then on the back of this, we could also provide some in invoice protection type insurance too. So the, the use cases, like we said, are, are, are quite endless. Well, just to add a few more, Richard, because I think I'm so tempted to do so. Um, what we could also discuss is also things like legal insurance, builders insurance, content insurance, um, to focus more, should we say, on the SME space. But builders and content can also work in the personal space as well. Yeah, and I think on the on the builders insurance too, and, and, and those ones that are more specific to a, a market, we can also target certain audiences. So although we do recommend looking at the customer behavior, you know, we can talk, target certain audiences so that you can change that content and you can be more targeted in your approach. So, um, you know, we have different tools that can enable us to, to be more accurate with our targeting too. Exactly. I'm sure you're, you're, the calls are turning right now. You can think of many, many more use cases because they really are. And there's so many different ways we can leverage this and improve the customer journey. But as mentioned, the solution is versatile um, and it can be span into many other markets. So now let me hand back to Matt to come the next segment of the meeting today or the webinar today. Okay, thanks Bill, thanks Richard. Um, yeah, I think that was a really interesting, insightful presentation there. Uh, certainly for me, it brings a lot of those, those use cases really bring to life, you know, the benefits for, I guess, the end consumer from personalization and you know, a streamlined customer journey, but I think also on the bank side, it really gives an opportunity to strengthen those relationships. So, yeah, they were the really two key takeaways for me there. So, okay, so we've got a slot now to go through some questions that have come in. Uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can, but if anyone wants to follow up with Richard or, or Bill uh, individually, their contact details will be on screen throughout this section. Okay, so the, the first one we've had come in, can we work with, with any insurance provider? So I assume that's from the, the bank perspective. So Bill, do you want to take this one? Does there have to be something uh, already prearranged in terms of a, a relationship with an insurer or, or can that be really open? Great question. The answer is both actually. So some customers of ours prefer to essentially have a plug and pay, play solution where they want to pick the insurance they want to provide to the customers and they want us to go away and find the underwriters for that product. And we can do that for them. Um, whereas some customers prefer to have a specific insurer that they want to work with. 
and we can link our APIs to the insurer to provide that seamless customer journey as well. So it is a great question, but our aim is to, or what we can do is provide solutions in both ways to specific insurers or to a bespoke rate that we can select for them in advance. Okay, so yeah, really it's down to the client then, I guess, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the next one we've had come in is, um, can we share any any numbers or experience of how this solution has benefited a client? So, uh, Richard, maybe we start with you on this one. What what can you share in terms of kind of success stories and things like that? Yeah, so we've seen with um, with personalization that um, the time in app doubles, login logins increase because customers are actually getting something that's insightful and and relevant to them. So they're looking for that next insight or that next bit of information. And on the back of that, you know, trust increases and that's the customer satisfaction is increasing, which leads to, you know, retention and stickiness at the bank. Um, and also we've seen MPS scores increase by 30 points at, at, at banks. So it's really, you know, providing them with, with the ability to personalize that. And, and actually we've seen, you know, CSATs and NPS scores and everything increasing. And not just that, but then, you know, these new features, you know, drawing new customers to the bank because, you know, of word of mouth and, or, you know, just people actually enjoying that experience. Okay, thanks, Richard. And Bill, do you have any experience from, I guess, the more digital booster side or anything you can share there? Absolutely. So, um, in many conversations with our clients that we've had so far with banks and insurance companies, um, banks more so, the levels of penetration are very, very low. As I mentioned at the start of the webinar today, that the existing method of distributions aren't as effective as they used to be. So I've seen levels of penetration as low as 1% um, in some banks, should we say. Um, with Digital Booster, as it is a live platform and it is out there, we see penetration levels of about 30%, which is massive compared to where a lot of the institutions stand at the moment. Um, and the reason why is because it allows the customer to be pushed to purchase the right product at the right time, as opposed to just have um, adverts coming up for insurance if it's targeted to the client for their specific need and they're in the right, right of right mind at that point then we can essentially work with the client to provide them with the insurance platform or the insurance product that they need and this is why 30 percent is um, such a high number compared to the ones and the twos and three percent I've seen already with other institutional clients. Okay brilliant thanks Bill thanks Richard. Um, Another question we've had is around, uh, I guess, around the IT effort, so the implementation side of things. And I, I think, Bill, you may have mentioned this, but uh, maybe if you could just um, go back and revisit that. So in terms of bringing a, a new product to or a digital booster product into the, the Engager platform, what's the, the timeline for that, roughly? No, sure. So to create any new products, um, I'm sure you can agree, obviously, having had several conversations with various institutions, it can take quite a long time, there's quite a long product roadmap in place. With Digital Boost, on the other hand, we can essentially provide an end-to-end solution within about four months. But this, as I mentioned, this can vary depending on the complexity of the product. So if it is a travel insurance product, it may be less than four months. But if it's maybe a motor-rated product, it could be more than four months. It all depends on you know how much information and the API integrations that are required uh, for the solution to come into light. But our aim would be to get a product from conception to market live on the platform within the space of four months. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. But Richard, anything to add there or no, I mean similar we went through the um the the back office tool so we can you know turn that around very quickly. So as soon as we have those those actions to target, I mean we can that's within days we can less than days we can actually get those journeys going. Perfect. Brilliant. So I think we've we've spoken a lot about kind of bringing new policies and new insurance products, um, pushing them towards uh, you know customers based on certain triggers. Uh, what about when it comes to renewals and uh, can we identify that? And again, thinking about the timing of, of introducing that to the the end user, uh, the client or the SME, um, is there something around that that the solution provides? I don't know, Richard. Maybe that's one for your side. Yes, so I think um, on that question, we do look at, you know, data in the past and we were looking, you know, up to a year of data. So I think we could definitely, you know, start looking at have there been 10 transactions, depending on when you want to approach that customer, we can then say, you know, this might be the right time. There's been 10 transactions through on, on, on the account and that could be the bank's account or open banking data, I guess. 
Um, but yeah, we could definitely look at, you know, looking at renewals and offering, you know, comparisons. So that's, that's, you know, we have focused on, on, on new insurances, but there's definitely, um, the option to look at different triggers, you know, and those are options are quite, we're quite flexible. They're adding different triggers to, to look for different opportunities. And that's all done, I guess, through the, the open banking side of things, isn't it? Right. With the transactions. Yeah, I mean, that could be the bank's data or the open banking yeah. data, but using that back office tool to really, you know, create that, that trigger, uh, or working with our team too. Okay. To perfect. Um, I think we, we may have mentioned this, but just, it might be worth mentioning again. So are, are white label solutions available? Um, Bill, do you want to take this one first? Absolutely. Yeah. So no, our solution is totally white label. So it's just there to ensure that the customer has the same look and feel of the bank that they bank with to make sure that they're in the same environment and to find that added level of security as well. So the solution for digital boost itself is completely white labeled. Okay. And, and Richard, the same for, for the engager tool, right? Yes, exactly. So we've got some widgets that can be customized to have the bank's look and feel and the mini widgets too. So we, and those can be placed, you know, within the app. Um, or we've also got a library of APIs that can, that bank can use, you know, the data we're sending them to position that wherever they want and have their own user experience. So be very flexible on how we deploy, but that's all white label. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And, and maybe one final question before uh, we close this section. Um, in terms of geographies and, and where, um, where the solution can work, is, is there any limitations to that? Um, I think the focus here is more on, on Europe, uh, with, with insurances and, and through the digital booster platform with Engager. Is, have we got any limitations there? No, not at all. So, I mean, we've got deployments across, across the globe, so there might be some differences in, you know, some categorization, but, you know, we have the ability to, to learn that and to train those models. Um, to adjust to different geographies. So there's no limitations from the engager point of view. You know, we looking at those triggers and staying that behavior and then providing people with those insights at the right time. And yeah, just to echo that as well, same with digital booster applies. Um, there are limitations at all whatsoever. Um, geolocation wise can still pick up locations of airports and wrecks and ski resorts, et cetera, um, to really target customers in the right way. Um, and with the collaboration of engager and just coming together, we can still leverage the data no matter where they are and push out the right for the right time for the right client. Okay, perfect. So I'm, I'm just conscious of time, guys. So we'll probably leave the questions there. Um, if we haven't got round to answer any of your questions yet, please don't worry. We'll follow up with you offline and, and make sure all of those are answered. Um, but before we kind of close this, this webinar, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about a project I mentioned earlier on. So over the, the last few months, we've been working on an ebook that you'll see on screen now where we address the possibilities that collaboration between banks and insurance companies can bring. So as we see and heard today, strategic partnerships have proven to be one of the, the best ways to overcome some of the global economy challenges, but also an opportunity to bring innovative solutions to the market. And in the financial service industry in particular, I think open banking has the potential to create a really exciting and, and dynamic collaborative ecosystem where alliances will enable the sharing of best practice and enable that to bring high value solutions to customers. So title FinTech Meets InsureTech, our ebook, which you'll receive shortly after the webinar, focuses on, focuses on exactly that and, and how partnerships between the banks and insurance companies has the potential to unlock huge value. And I guess, especially in the SME market segment. So you'll find exclusive articles, case studies, and interviews with some of the top execs from Crip and Strands. So we hope you enjoy that. And, and please don't re hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or comments. And finally, I'd like to just say that we've got a short feedback survey that will be sent out. Uh, if you could take the time to complete that and provide any comments, we would very much appreciate that. So I think we've given you back a little bit of time today. So you've got time before your next meeting to grab a drink and have a, a short break and answer those emails. So it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for joining and I hope you all have a great day.